Hey everyone, so this video is going to be about uh, encoders and decoders. I'll try to make it as quick as possible because my other takes of, once again, I'll always be in like 10 minutes long and stuff when it really doesn't need to be. So, let's get started here. An encoder, the basic idea behind an encoder is that it will take multiple inputs, as seen here, and will turn it into only a few outputs, as seen here. A decoder is the same thing except that it does the opposite. So it will take very few inputs and will turn it into multiple outputs. So the way that we find out how many um, i variables or j variables there are um, are with the number of x, y, z variable type things that we have. So if we have x, y, and z, that means that we have three variables coming out of here. And uh, what's 2 to the power of 3? That's 8. So in terms of an encoder, if we have three outputs here, then we're going to have eight inputs. And for the decoder, if we have three inputs, then we'll have eight outputs. So I'm going to cut out for a second while I put up some truth tables, and then we'll fill them in together. Okay, so this is the truth table for an encoder. So it's kind of similar to a multiplexer <clears throat> in that we're still kind of dealing with cases or conditions. So when x, y, and z... Oh crap, I'm still getting used to one note. I have no idea what's happening half the time. When x, y, and z are all zero, that means that our input will be our very first input just because this is the first kind of condition of x, y, and z. So that will be one. And we're just going to iterate all the way down. It's going to kind of form like a bit of a diagonal type thing. So I'm going to fill in some zeros. So we'll use green for that. Zero, 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 zero. So you're only going to have one, one ver uh, value on each row of inputs for the encoder. Alright, so now we're on our second condition. So another way of saying it is that if the input is i1, so if you have i1 is equal to 1, then x, y, and z will be 0, 0, 1. So we'll do our zeros now. Because remember, we can only have one, one value per row of inputs. And we're just iterating down. We're honestly, we're just, just going down the list. So now i1 is 0, because we're on the third. Uh, third row now. Okay, so I think you guys get the idea. So I'm going to cut out and fill out the rest of the table. Okay, so this is our <coughs> completed truth table for an encoder. And as you can see, we have kind of this diagonal thing here. I right, just retrace the one so we can see them better. So again, we're just kind of going down the list here. So <coughs> we have input 0 here, which is our very first input at the top, right here. And when that is 1, then we'll have 0, 0, 0 for x, y, z. And then we just kind of go down the truth table. So now we're going to look at decoders. OK, so decoders are really just the opposite of encoders. So I took the truth table from the encoder that we just did and I just reverse it and it's it's honestly it's the same concept so I'm just trying to change the cursor here so I can follow it a bit better so when we have x is 0, y is 0, and z is 0 which is this condition here, first condition, then i0 will be 1 and again, we can only have one, one value per row of outputs here instead of inputs. So it's the same thing, instead that we're just really looking at the x, y, z. So when x, y, and z are all zero, our first output will come out. I actually forgot to label this as being j. So these are all j values. And it doesn't really matter what you call 
these. But just for clarity, I want to differ. I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. I, hate that. I wanted to differ um, the encoder input from the decoder output. So those are all J values. So x, y, and z, when x, y, and z are all zeros, then our first output will go out. When x, y, and z are 0, 0, 1, our second output will go out. It's just based on conditions. So again, we're just iterating down the list here. So we go from, where's my cursor? There it is. So we go from 1, our first condition, to our second, to our third, to our fourth, to our fifth, to our sixth, to our seventh, to our eighth. And we're just following the diagonal once again. So I hope that was helpful. That's pretty much it for encoders and decoders. Uh, feel free to suggest ideas for other videos in the comments section or to ask questions in the comments section. Uh, so thanks for watching and